What up guys, it's Jay here and welcome to TV Time with Jay and uh, this is my review of Winona Earp Season 4 Episode 5 Holy War Part 1 the episode right before the big Winona Earp Season 4 mid-season finale. Uh, of course it's part one of a two-parter so this is going to be huge. Now as per usual with my episode reviews I'll be recapping the events of the episode and then going over my thoughts and feels about the different plot points all throughout. So if you haven't seen the episode yet, do yourself a favor, watch the episode first, then come back here and tell me your thoughts and feels in the comments down below because I will be going into spoilers. You have been warned. Okay, so um, since this is my first uh, Winona Earp review for the season, at least on YouTube, I'll go ahead and quickly kind of give my thoughts on the season as a whole so far. Um, honestly, the beginning was a little slow. Um, I felt like they were definitely um, off a bit. They kind of just went a little overboard with the humor. Uh, it really didn't move the story anywhere, and it felt like the garden was uh, just kind of brushed over and kind of treated as unimportant. Like, I realized that, um, you know, the garden and the after effects of being in the garden are a big overarching kind of through line for the season, but... Like, the time actually spent in the garden was kind of just brushed over. I thought that was going to be a bigger deal than it was, but it didn't really seem that way, or at least it doesn't seem that way right now. Of course, that could change in hindsight, but at least as of right now, that's my opinion on the actual time spent in the garden so far. So, there's that. Um, however, things do eventually pick up once we get to uh, episode 4. Uh, that actually felt like a real start to a Wine on Herb season. We get the introduction of the Clanton family, aka the family that the Earps and Doc Holliday went up against in the OK Corral. So we get, you know, a classic Old West grudge. Um, and. You know, set up for the plot and kind of an understanding of our antagonist. Now we know that the uh, sheriff who took over in uh, Ned Lee and Nicole's place and the other chick that was with him are members of the Clanton family and the Clantons of course are out to destroy the Earps and ma'am, Mama Clanton is specifically the one in charge, you know, masterminding it. She's like the Clanton equivalent of the Earp heir. She's the Clanton heir and essentially um, we don't know the full extent of their abilities, but we do know one thing. They can summon, like, zombie versions of their ancestors to basically serve as reapers to kill and attack their enemies. And they sent them after both Winona and, unknowingly, Rachel, because she was wearing Winona's jacket. Um, and also, Rachel Valdez, a um, young girl who was the daughter of a Black Badge employee... Uh, who was rescued by uh, Nicole and Winona in the uh, first episode of the season has now kind of become an unofficial herb and uh, she has uh, made friends and developed feelings uh, for Billy the youngest of the Clanton family and because he also cares for her he basically broke the command to attack her in order to save her life and to save the herbs however ma'am didn't take kindly to that and it looks like in this episode billy himself was turned into a reaper or a you know a zombie so that's pretty interesting so this episode continues into a positive trend uh we get more development on like our black badge team you know of you know jeremy chetri i'm gonna call him chetri because my name is jeremy and i feel weird when referring to other characters named Jeremy, because it almost sounds like I'm talking in uh, third person. So, Chetri is back with the team, and at first it's like all good vibes and, you know, happy times, but then you see that there's tension between Nicole and Chetri, and it's like, okay, what is the big deal here? We know that they're best friends. Why is there such a big problem? Now, I understand both ends of it, right? Chattery couldn't really contact Nicole because, you know, Black Badge was reforming and, you know, getting themselves back together, and he was constantly being monitored. And, you know, with all the crap that Black Badge had done to them before, 
There's no way he was going to trust them. So he wasn't just going to communicate on an open line with Nicole about all this crazy stuff. Uh, but then, you know, on Nicole's end, she felt like she was abandoned by the only other friend that she still had in this world. And so, you know, as she lost hope and kind of went crazy, um, she didn't have Jeremy there to help her out. So that was like, you know, very rough for her. And we get to see kind of the extent of like Nicole's PTSD and just overall stress within this like you know missing year and a half uh, we see that she made a deal with Mama Clanton we have no idea what the uh, circumstances of that deal was but I think maybe it has something to do with like servitude um, and like you know binding herself to the Clantons and you know obeying Clanton orders um, because uh, you know, we see that she has kind of been serving as a sleeper agent for the Clantons. You know, she set the homestead on fire, uh, did all this other crazy stuff, or tried to set the homestead on fire. And um, every time she tries to actually, you know, come clean and tell the truth about what happened to her and what deal she made to help get them out of the garden, basically... It goes all, you know, Old Testament, you know, Moses Plague style, and she starts barfing up frogs. So she's unable to say anything. Um, however, you know, I think it's a bond of servitude for life, and that's what she promised to get them out of there, which is why she comes up with the loophole of um, her dying for a little bit, quote-unquote, so that that breaks the contract. If her life ends, she's no longer, you know, bonded to serve the Clanton's agenda. Because we know that, you know, Mama Clanton's plan is to have the Earps and Doc Holliday destroy themselves from within because that's a better form of revenge. Uh, something else that's really interesting about this episode and this season is that we see Doc reflect more on Wyatt and his friendship and relationship with Wyatt and Wyatt as a person and uh, you actually see kind of not just resentment but also a realization that you know his old friend was not as great of a guy as he remembered and he is altering his legacy to make it sound the way that he wants it to he pins a lot of the stuff on Doc when it was really him and I actually like this a lot because this kind of uh, leans more into a more historically accurate picture of Wyatt Earp now I'm not saying this show is going to be anywhere near historically accurate because you know we're fighting demons and supernatural creatures and all that but the real life Wyatt Earp was an asshole with a badge all right, he's been arrested almost as many times um, as he's arrested people. He's gotten into a lot of trouble in terms of, you know, gambling, getting into fights, drinking, uh, messing with prostitutes, all the usual Old West stuff. And uh, he is a bit of a scoundrel. Actually, he's more than a bit of a scoundrel. He's a massive scoundrel, which is why, you know, Winona is actually a, a pretty, you know, fair match in terms of, uh, you know, being Wyatt's heir. Um, also, speaking of Wyatt and Wyatt's legacy, Winona does manage to find out where Peacemaker is. However, Peacemaker outright refuses to, you know, answer Winona's call. And without Peacemaker, there's no way Winona can deal with the Clantons and all their crazy creatures and demons. So they're in a bit of a bind here. Now, uh, their plan is to find this scorned woman that's uh, in the painting and take her to the sanctuary, and maybe that'll bring Peacemaker back. Now, the hugest plot twist of that is that the scorned woman that they need help from is none other than Rosita, a.k.a. the revenant bitch who stole Alice from Doc and Winona. And I probably shouldn't have said the word bitch because I'm trying to remain monetized and whatnot, but you know what? Whatever, because that's what she is. But men did not see that coming. Uh, I'm very interested to see 
the interactions Winona and Doc have with her, especially after, you know, all the stuff with Alice and all that. So it's going to be really interesting. Um, the action next week looks pretty intense. I wonder if, uh, you know, Nicole's death plan is going to work out. And it also looks like we might be able to get um, Cole, or I believe his name is Cole, whatever the Sheriff Planton's name is, the older brother, I believe we'll be a we might be able to get him on our side because he seems to be wavering a little bit. Um, the sister, Cleo, she seems a little bit more schemy and uh, might actually uh, be more inclined to be on the mother's side just so that she can be on her good side. Uh, but I think the older brother, especially seeing what happened to Billy, um, has shaken him up. And uh, he might actually turn on his mom and help out the Earps. But we'll just have to see. Overall, I really enjoyed this episode. But let me know what you guys thought about this episode in the comments down below. Did you enjoy all the uh, way hot kinky jokes? Uh, and, uh, you know, what have you thought about this season as a whole? I mean, obviously, you know... This is, uh, you know, them coming back after almost three years. It's like been like two and a half or at least two years now. Um, so, you know, I gave them a pass for being a little bit rusty in the beginning. Uh, but what have you thought about the season overall? And are you excited for the mid-season finale? Let me know all those thoughts and feels in the comments down below. As always, don't forget to leave this video a like to let me know you enjoyed it. And if you like what I do here and you want to see more from me, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Um, also, if you want to like live tweet with me during shows um, or you know chat with me while I play video games, you can uh, follow me on both my Twitter and Twitch, which are linked down in the description below. Hope you guys have enjoyed this review. This has been Jay from TV Time with Jay, and I will see you guys next week in the mid-season finale. But until then, hopefully you get to make your peace.